Hello everyone, it's Miranda here from the Prima Marketing Design Team. Been a while since I've done one of these tutorials, so bear with me. But I wanted to showcase the Prima Traveler Journals that Prima comes out with. And I feel like sometimes they get neglected because you feel like they're only used in a certain way or, you know, they're only used for when you're traveling. But I have started using mine for memory keeping, for keeping up with quotes, things like that. And they're wonderful that. They're wonderful for art journals. They're wonderful for, like, all kinds of different options. So you can come up with your own little spreads in there with, like, quotes. And I have my own handwriting on a lot of them. Sometimes I do it on the back and they're quite personal, so I haven't shown those. But I'm showing you here two of the ones that I have and one's much smaller obviously so this is one of the first ones I ever got and I am just going to use it right now and I'm going to use the Havana collection since it's one of the newer lines to create it's like a half art journal half memory keeping um, spread because it's very artistic and I wanted to play with my mediums and see how it held up um, as far as that went and it held up amazingly well because with the smaller journal that I primarily use I use watercolor paper in it and I wanted to see how this paper that came in it worked and it worked perfectly well so I'm just using soft gloss gel to adhere my paper down so I just used a spatula or a palette knife if you will to spread it and then a brush just to kind of make sure everything was smoothed out perfectly and now I'm going to add my beautiful Havana paper right down the center and I burnish it really well with my edges. If I kind of cut it off, it's because I'm just trying to keep the video, um, you know, down to a reasonable length. So I have some of those new stamps right there. They're like little foliage stamps from IOD and I absolutely love them and I thought they would look really cool. Um, I had a different idea in mind. I was going to make like a little wreath and have some text in it. But my text ended up being a little too personal, I decided. So again, I used the back of the page to write it on. And that's what I usually do. It's almost like people who do scrapbook layouts and have hidden journaling. And that's what I do with mine if I have something that's very personal and I don't want to show it in pictures or show it publicly. So I just ended up using them anyway. Um, so I'm fussy cutting a few of them out. And it's really pretty and it's really fun to do with like your flower clusters. I don't like typical green leaves, so this is like a perfect option for me, and it looks really, really pretty. So I did the whole page that way and fussy cut them all out. And then I'm going to grab my journal here, and I'm making sure that none of the pages are stuck together, which they weren't. Nothing was warped at all. Not a single bit of warping happened during this process, which was pretty amazing, and I was very surprised. So now I'm adding some clear gesso on top um, because I am going to be using some of the Art Alchemy paints from Finnebear. Uh, and I just didn't want, you know, my paper not to be primed and it's kind of like a habit, I guess. I'm used to doing mixed media. So you don't have to do all this. If you're literally just going to do like a little layout in here or memory keeping or whatever, you can skip all of these extra steps and just go straight to adding a picture and some words, um, a little bit of cute stickers, maybe a little stamping. But I definitely went a little more on the artsy side. So here I'm grabbing some of that Havana washi tape, which I really love, which I was not a fan of washi tape until um, recently, and I can't get enough of especially the Havana washi tape. I really, really love it. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm just adding it on there in different areas. I kind of know I want a circle to be there at the right hand top side. So I'm kind of skipping that area and just kind of doubling up on some of it um, and just adding different lengths just, just for some good texture in the background. A lot of it's going to get covered up in the end and that's okay. Like when you're dealing with mixed media, of course, things are going to get covered up and that's completely fine with me. And I actually ripped the paper there. Um, I don't know if you can tell that, but it does not show at all when I'm completely done. So I did use a lot of foil accents on this as well, so I wanted to go ahead and mention that in case I forgot to. I had a piece of silver foiling left over, and you'll see me use that quite a bit. It's a really big lifesaver for um, getting rid of excess glue and things. So I'm just going to keep adding the washi tape until I feel like I have a good amount on there. And this black and white striped one is my favorite, but one thing that I do like to do is I like to add two layers completely overlapped 
just right with the black on top of the black and the white on top of the white because I feel like it just really makes it stand out a lot better. Um, makes it more bold if you do double layers on that particular tape because it's pretty transparent. You know, we're dealing with washi tape here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to tuck the excess over to the back where my journaling is going to be. So I used the rose wall, wall, excuse me, the rose wall die from Prima. And I love, love, love this beautiful lattice type piece. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite dies. So I'm, I wanted to use some of the negatives because I had done this on an art journal page in the past where I just used like negatives and things and it came out really pretty. So I wanted to use a few of those. So I'm going to grab my trusty planner glue stick. Um, I love this glue stick. It is amazing. It's so strong. So I'm going to grab a few of those really curly pieces that came out of that rose wall um, die. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere those down. So that's what I'm doing there. I know it's kind of small to see, but I'm just adding the glue on the back of it and just pushing it down with a paper towel because that glue is very sticky and I just didn't want my hands to be covered in it. So then I'm going to tear apart the die cut piece and just kind of place it where I feel like it looks right, making sure that the foil shows because, you know, the 12 by 12 papers are foiled, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, I love them being foiled. They're so incredibly pretty like that. So I really liked that look. You can see when the light hits it just how pretty it looks. So again, there's that silver foiling sheet I was telling you about. And I just use that if I have any excess like of that um, glue pin sticking out. It's going to grab it and it's going to add just more foil to it. So it's like pretty perfect for getting up any excess that you may have. So I'm going to add that. Look like a perfect little corner piece there. So I'm going to add that to the bottom right edge there. So I added a few more pieces, but these two I just did on camera. I figured you could get the gist of what I pretty much did after that. So after I was done, I went in with that glue pen again and just added a little bit more of the foil. And you can use a brayer and it will really, really get those um, that foiling on there very well. Better than your finger will, you know, better than just rubbing it. So that's kind of what I'm doing there and it just adds this really cool effect. It's just a very random splattering of this silver foil which looks really really pretty. Um, and I always keep like either gold or rose gold or silver there on hand and I just love the way it looks. So I keep that there ready to kind of to kind of go with. So I cut a circle out and I actually just used the sculpture medium to trace a circle out. I didn't use a die cut or anything and then I'm just tracing it onto my um, travel journal page right here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of watercolor around it almost like I'm making a sun was kind of my idea. Um, but of course I'm using kind of contrasting colors when you would think sun you definitely wouldn't think like purple and blue and pink but this is my representation of like a star or a sun okay so it's like I, I'm allowed to have a little bit of creative freedom I think on this one hopefully you guys will kind of get what I went for at the end but these are some of the new met metallic paints and they're so pretty I think that one's frozen berries I used the romance pink I use the icy blue and then I'm using the sparks in the uh, mermaid sparkle which is absolutely beautiful so as I add them in there, I'm also going to add some water just to kind of um, help them to blend a little bit better. So I'm just adding them in my palette, and then I'm going to squirt a little bit of water there at the end. And a lot of these are brand new, so that's why you're seeing me kind of take the, the lid off. I just got them in the mail. So they are brand spanking new, and I hadn't used them yet. So maybe that influenced my decision to go ahead and use those. And I always keep either a rag or a paper towel handy just to, you know, kind of clean up your paintbrush as you go. So I am just going to do that and start on my circle. And I don't have any rhyme or reason. You can see I'm kind of getting inside already, like immediately off the rip. And that's okay. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Since I added that gesso, that's one of the main reasons I add clear gesso to everything is it really protects... Um, your surfaces. So I kind of use that as like a good way to, to mark my edges. Um, I didn't end up using it the whole time, but it was kind of a good way to kind of get me started anyway on using using that and keeping my edges nice and clean. 
but you know, I figured it's going to get messy. It's going to look watercolory, and that's kind of what I was going for, so it didn't bother me. So I'm going to add some of the darker romance pink there, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite colors that Fenda Bear has released yet. Um, I love all of her Art Alchemy products. They're amazing, and it really lends beautiful with watercolor effects if you just dilute it with a little bit of water. Um, so I'm just adding, I have four of those colors, and they all blend together well perfectly. Um, so I'm not worried about anything getting muddy. I can just kind of go in and out with the blues and pinks and purples and just let it do its thing. So I'm going to keep going around my circle there and adding the paints until I feel like I have achieved the look that I want and I've got that pencil line covered up pretty well. And if you see me lifting my journal page up, it's because I'm letting some of that liquidy paint kind of flow down and do its own thing. So I'll do that kind of back and forth to each side until I get the effect I want. And I'll cut the camera off in a minute because this was a little bit tedious and I don't want to kind of sit here forever. So hopefully you guys get the gist of what I did here. I just kept adding paint in the four colors I chose until I was happy with it. And then I just kind of splatter it around too. Um, with each color until I was happy with it. So I'm just going to keep going around after I let it dry a little bit by a little bit and adding a little bit more of the color. So I kind of let it dry in between layers and then just do a little bit more of that tilting and let it kind of run. So even though it looks like I keep going continuously, I did let it dry three times and then added a little bit more on there. And what I love about adding that rose wall is that it creates this really cool texture for the paint to kind of run down into. And it just creates really cool dimension and just, you know, it looks a lot better in person than it does on camera. And it looks really cool just kind of going down into those little raised areas, almost like it's embossed. And it looks really cool. So I'm just doing some more splattering, of course. I think that's my favorite thing to do is splatter the paints. So I don't know if it looks like a sun to y'all, but I'm going to say it's like a, a star, um, I guess, you know, which, which is the sun. So it's a star. Um, it's just not necessarily our star. Our, our star happens to be a yellow dwarf. So obviously this one is like a blue purple one. So I'm taking some of my favorite stamps, which are the treasured memories ones. And I had accidentally forgot to hit record because it's been so long. So I had a few of them stamped already, but now I'm adding a little bit of script here and there just randomly throughout. And I do use stays on ink just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And you can see how sparkly that paint is. So I've got some gesso in there now. And what I'm doing is I'm going into those areas where I have that rose wall dye and I'm adding it directly in there and I'm going to spritz it with some water and let it kind of run to create some dimension again just like that embossed look and you, hopefully you can tell there just how cool that looks. It really brings it to life. It makes it like look like a second layer as opposed to just one flat piece of paper. So I add some at the top and just kind of spray and let it run down and it all lends to just a really cool looking background. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the desired effect. Just adding a little bit more white just to kind of tone down all of the colors I have going on. Even though they all go well together, I feel like sometimes a little bit of white just kind of tones everything down. And I keep a little small tube. It's almost like a squeeze bottle with a tiny bit of gesso in it and a lot of water in it. And I shake it up and it's really diluted and it's perfect for using for times like this when you want just a little bit of white but you don't want the gesso to completely cover. So it's kind of cool to add, add it in there and just let it mix together. And it's really great for highlighting certain areas. Like I'm even, I'm even adding it into the star piece up there. So gesso is definitely my best friend. It's definitely a go-to item. And I want to make sure that the book still closes properly. So if you see me lift it up, I'm just trying to make sure that it still closes properly. 
I know I'm adding a lot of paints and stuff, but that dries flat. I do add two flowers at the end, so you'll see me make sure that they do still shut properly. So I'm adding the sentiment on the front that kind of sparked this, and it's actually in the paper line itself. And I'm just using the glue pen there, and that's kind of what prompted my journaling. I've been going through some personal changes lately, and I'm telling you, using, using the Prima Travel Journal to do like some journaling and getting it off of my mind and putting it down on paper and, you know, just writing out how I'm feeling has been very, very helpful. I mean, I have a couple of pages that are just flat out writing and it's really nice. I keep it with me. I keep it in my purse. It's the perfect size and it's just a really good way to uh, see something and if you feel prompted to write, just to go ahead and write it down. You don't have to do anything any particular way. Don't feel like anything that Prima sells has to be used in a certain way. It doesn't. So I'm grabbing a piece of crocheted lace there and I had already colored it with those same um, paint colors that I use for like my star and my background and everything. I'm choosing a little bit of 3D matte gel and I'm going to run it with a little palette knife and just adhere my lace down there. And I'm going to use some of the letters that I fussy cut out of the Havana paper line, which I really love that particular sheet in the line, and you'll see which one I'm talking about. It's just so cool. It's got a lot of gold foil, and it's got every letter in the alphabet, and it's just very cool for, you know, fussy cutting and adding a saying to anything. So again, I'm just making sure it kind of folds correctly and that the lace is not obstructing it. So I'm only going to use two flowers, surprisingly. One is from the Lost and Found Collect collection and a, another one is that purple bundle um I think that's actually the name just whatever color it is and then flower bundle and it's pretty so I'm using those sprigs there that I had fussy cut just using 3d matte gel as my adhesive and you can see I kind of changed my mind there which was no big deal I just put the bigger one down first and then added that one there And I always keep a paper towel handy just to go ahead and dab up any excess. You can see there the lace was still wet, so it's kind of absorbing up some of that color, which is fine. And just make sure you let everything dry properly or it's not going to adhere as well. So I'm lucky that this is just a paper item or it would definitely not adhere as well because this lace is still wet. So there's certain things you have to kind of keep in mind. So I have the word dream there that I fussy cut from that particular sheet out of the Havana line, which I love. And I went around the edge of each letter with a little bit of that romance pink paint. And I felt like that really helped it look good. And I'm going to kind of stagger the letters so that it's not just straight across. I'm just going to kind of move them up and down a little bit. And I'm using the 3D matte gel instead of the glue pen because I want these to kind of stand up a little more. And I, you can see there I put the A without thinking right in the middle where that's going to close at. Which would have been fine if I would have added a little fold mark there. But I forgot to do that so I'll have to fix that. You'll see me start to try to fix that a little bit off camera. Um, because I realized my book was not going to close properly if I kept it that way. So I'm going to kind of play with, even though it's only two flowers, I always struggle with my placement of flowers. So I'm going to kind of move things around. And where you see it now is probably not where it's going to end up. So I could tell right there that the A was not going to let my book close properly, which I needed it to. It stays in my purse. Um, it does have room to grow. So I want to just make sure that everything still closes properly. So that's what we have so far. And I'm just wiping up a little bit of the mess that I have. And I'm going to add one more of those little fussy cut sprigs coming down there. And I, you can see they're just kind of folded it that way. When the book folds, it doesn't ruin anything. And I wanted to use one of these beautiful purple flowers right here. So that is pretty much it for that part. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the desired effect. Just adding a little bit more white just to kind of tone down all of the colors I have going on even though they all go well together I feel like sometimes a little bit of white just kind of tones 
So I moved the flower to the left a little bit because I didn't like the way it looked going over to the right. It covered up a little too much. So now I'm just grabbing some of the Havana chipboards, which I really love. And I'm just using a few of those little small sentiments and putting them up there at the left edge because I felt like it was just kind of lacking something like it was a little neglected. So I'm just going to add two of those stickers right there on the top left edge. And I used to not be such a huge fan of the ephemera packs or the chipboard packs, but I'm telling you now I absolutely love them. I think they're amazing. You can see how much I've used already. So I'm going to grab a few of the Say It and Crystals. And this is actually from an older line. It's from the Lost and Found collection, which is a classic. And I'm just going to add a few of them wherever I see fit. And that is pretty much it, y'all. I hope you'd enjoyed my tutorial and if you have any questions of course leave it in the comments down below. I really enjoyed doing another tutorial. It's been a while so if I'm rusty excuse me and I hope that you're inspired to grab your PTJs and just do something different with them. You don't have to stick to what you know you see online. Use it for what suits you. Use it for what you like and I hope you are inspired and have a great day. Thanks for watching y'all. Bye!